Hi, and welcome to Telepathic TV. This is television that you watch with your third eye. I'm R. Neville Johnston. And I'm Mary Phelan, and our program is about raising our consciousness. And raising consciousness is a very important thing for us to do. We are quite naturally raising our consciousness over these millions of lives that we live. The thing is, it is possible to dramatically accelerate the raising of consciousness, which is truly what this show is dedicated to. And uh, one of the methods we would adore all of us to catch on to is our relationship with time. Time is not your enemy. In fact, you create time. I can prove it in that a minute can take an hour or an hour can take a minute. So uh, Mary and I introduce constantly the concept and the fact of the Mayan calendar, which talks about time divided into increments we're not used to, like a 13-day wave spell. And in that 13-day wave spell, today is the eighth day, um, and the tribe that has come up today is the tribe Mary and I are, the Bin tribe. Mm -hmm. So it's eight Bin today. Yeah, this is a very balanced number right in between us. I'm a four and you're a 12, mm -hmm. so eight is the, the one right in between. Uh, ben is known as the Crusader. Uh, they are known to be very driven and like to share information, mm -hmm. so sometimes can be very animated talkers. Truly so. And today's a day of exploring options of higher consciousness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the options we're exploring on this particular show yes, is dun, uh, dun, dun. Hidden Messages in Water. And I've brought a book by Masaru Emoto, which I'll hold up the book later because I highly recommend people buying it. I don't know if, uh, if we have some viewers out there that have been watching us for a while, but a little over two years ago we did a show on this same topic. Uh, we didn't have the same pictures that we're going to be able to show tonight. But um, essentially, Emoto, this uh, Japanese scientist, decided that he was going to see if he could capture water forming crystals with, under different conditions to see how, how much water is affected by thought, by action, by word, and by music. Um, and other things, television sets and cell phones and things like that. Microwaves. Yes, and microwaves. Mm -hmm. And so he captured, he found this way to uh, flash freeze water from different sources, and then as it heated up under the microscope, it would form these beautiful crystals. And he noticed something when he was doing that, that ordinary tap water, he had a very, very difficult time, if ever, to be able to form crystals in tap water. So he started taking samples of water from rivers and waterfalls, and then doing all these really marvelous experiments with it. And it shows how water is programmed so absolutely. And so I thought we'd start us off this evening uh, showing you some of the pictures and what, what happens with our intention. This first picture uh, is just ordinary water that had no crystals form, but then a group of people uh, sent love and gratitude to this water. And look at this magnificent crystal that it formed. And I'd like to note also that Water forms in a six-pointed or six-sided crystal just like quartz does and grows on the same spiral. That's why parts of the picture look kind of out of focus is because it grows on a spiral. And let me just point out a few others here. Um, now this is an interesting one. Uh, um, the top two in this particular shot, the, f the first one, this green, is, is in I believe that's the English version, or the Japanese version of saying, you fool, to water, and then flash frozen. 
which is sort of our version of saying you idiot or something like that. And then the second one is being said in English. The bottom picture is after people have said the words and thought the th thoughts of, you make me sick, I will kill you. And you can almost see a man holding a gun in the image of the water. In the death and head. It, yeah, over and, yeah, in the death head. And over and over again, the thoughts actually act out in this water. It's mm -hmm. been phenomenal. As a matter of fact, on the f other side of the page, sorry to do this to the camera folks, um, the top one is the word angel in Japanese, and the bottom is the word Satan or devil. Now I'd like to, to you to look at the bottom picture especially, and on the next page, it's, it's a funny, uh, co well, coincidence or, you know, there's no such thing. Yeah. This, the top word says, let's do it, or the top picture. The bottom picture is, do it, without the let's do so it. And it looks Nike. just like the, the image that Satan or devil is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the uh, it's Nike a guilt company. impression. Nike company logo is, do it, not yeah. let's do it, do it. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll oh, just do it. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah. So we can see how easily water is affected by thought. Mm -hmm. Now, what percent of water are you? Okay, so when someone we love or someone we know well enough to be engaged in conversation with goes, you idiot, you didn't do this, that happens to the water inside of you. This is scientific proof of how sensitive water, which we are made of, uh, is sensitive to feelings, thoughts, and especially either brilliant, praising, loving thoughts or deriding negative thoughts. So, the thing is you have charge of the water within your body. So tell the water in your body that you love it. Yes, and so when we, when we empower each other with words of encouragement and empowerment, we mm -hmm. really do physically contribute to changing this individual as well as ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good point you brought up that we are in command of our water and once we realize this we don't have to accept the programming sent to us with negative words not at all no and and, and, you just and your field once energy comes to you it's it's yours to mutate however mm -hmm. serves you mm -hmm. um, now there's the potomac story while you're getting the next yeah. shot up there on this show uh, gone by a couple of years now uh, i believe you mary had asked uh, people to send love to the potomac per se and uh, since a lot of us drive by it every day as a way of life, and every time you see it, send love to it, I'm telling you to do this. But it turns out that about a month after the broadcast, uh, there was a stream of clear water running up the center of the Potomac, and the scientists involved attributed it to the melting of the glaciers on our planet. In other words, glacier water uh, began to um, mediate the polluted Potomac water uh, and I do feel that this was because of the people that uh, heard us and then started to send love to the water in particular. So a conclusion, a very obvious and viable conclusion that you can draw is to go down in the basement with a magic marker and you find the main that comes into your house. You'll know it's the main because there's something to measure the water going through it. Okay, so right after this measuring device, write, uh, thank you water, I love you on all the water coming into your house and it will be these beautiful crystals yes and remember we we are we become what we consume i mm -hmm. mean on a vibrational level as well as on a literal level it's really phenomenal how this works um, and i'll talk a little bit more about that sure. in a minute now this p next picture i'm going to show and we're looking at this side of the page um, this kind of frazzled looking thing is after playing heavy metal music which, uh, you know, after my uh, teenage years of Led Zeppelin and Jimi Hendrix, now I know <laughs> why I was thinking the way I was, because this is actually what it does to your molecules. And I can see when you're in a rebellious state of mind, it's like you're, you're almost like flattening your whole programming to, to accept new. So I understand why teenagers might be drawn to that kind of music, mm -hmm. but it really does uh, leave you in an unusual state. Yeah. Now the second thing that I'm just going to show that. I think these are very important. The top one is the television. This is water with a, with a love and gratitude sent to it, and then after it has been placed in front of a television. Now, I will say that shows that empower you, it does not do this to you, oddly enough, yes. which I'll show you a picture later on mm -hmm. that says that. Um, as mm -hmm. a matter of fact, when we saw a DVD on this particular water, Hidden Messages in Water, they uh, the 
the music that they gave an example of how it affected was our theme song mm -hmm. and how it made these beautiful, lovely crystals. Which is what grows inside of you. That's why the music that is our theme song is just such an uplifting moment. Uh, we have absolute scientific proof of it. This yeah. is the thing. And it's also the scientific proof of the language codes that we keep talking about on this program. It really makes a difference the words you use. It does. Mm -hmm. It absolutely does. And the, the one down at the, the bottom of the page, right over here, is after the same thing, love and gratitude, uh, and then in front of a computer monitor. These have the highest EMFs. And we've done shows in the past, ways to, to kind of defract that or deflect that from mm -hmm. you. But in front yeah, of a computer monitor. Our crystal monitor, class talks yeah. a lot about that subject as well. And then on the other page, we're going to um, talk about mobile phones and microwave ovens. Oh, yeah. The top one is a mobile, mobile phone. So mm -hmm. if you're sleeping with it next to your head, you might want to rethink this. <laughs> and you Take see it just. And bedroom. this is water after it's been in a micro, or beautiful water, and then put into a microwave oven. So this, it, you see how that is so similar to the, the devil and the do it. Mm -hmm. it. It just gives you that energy. It's programming you with that energy. And so also, you know, when animals are killed cruelly, it, it puts an energy signature into oh, the sure. animal. And yelling at your pet, you know, mm -hmm. that, that doesn't work. Uh, yeah. You're angry, but it's not to be taken out oh, on the pet. Oh, and we have a call. And so we'll yes. go ahead and take that. Okay. And then we'll... Uh, and here. There we yeah. go. Hi, caller. What's your name, please? Leslie. Leslie, Hi. what can we do for you? Yeah, I'm going through, through a lot of transitions. And okay. that's very interesting what you were talking about there. But I would like to have a reading by Mary, if possible. Yes. Okay. We, we can return okay. to this. Sure. This is good. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I know uh, any, uh, first let me say that the, the, everyone watching the audience, if you feel that this reading resonates with you, then take the empowerment from it. Just go ahead, yeah, Radis. And if all. it doesn't resonate with you, yeah. stay tuned. Even the person we'll that we're doing up, the reading for. Yeah, <laughs> we'll come up with something that resonates with okay. you. Okay. Well, let me see. Now, the first card we got is Innocence. This is somebody that, you know, sometimes it feels like we're like, oh gosh, here we go again. We've come all the way around and we're starting, you know, some kind of person or force is back in our life. And we may at first think, oh no, I'm, I'm bored with this. But look closer because it's, not, it's actually the next rung up of a spiral. Mm -hmm. It's not really back where you thought you were. And, and this is talking about, too, the eyes to see what is there. That, that perhaps it's all in your own backyard. And that it's just the eyes to see it. And then once you see it, it becomes animated. And the illusion of the backyard disappears and it's this incredible new life. And so I, I feel like this is calling to, to really re-examine something. And stepping into letting go, I, I always find the story to this. It reminds me of if you go into a restaurant and you order a happy life and the waitress walks off and you say, oh gosh, I, there's no way I deserve to have a happy life or that was too complex of an order. And you call her back and you change the order to something lesser. And she walks away and you go, oh, I really wanted the happy life. And so what happens is the waitress never really makes it to the kitchen to put your order in. And so I would just drop everything and say, you know, I, I, I want to feel like, like however it is you'd like to feel at the end of the day, happy, fulfilled, and just let the universe bring that to you and just feel that you're worth it. And I feel like what that's looking for, the abundance in your own backyard, I feel that's in your own self. Like mm -hmm. it's not something that you have to acquire or do or be. It's right there. Yeah, and that is very universally yeah. applicable. Yeah. But to take command of your life. This is what we're about on this show. Take command of your life. If you don't, somebody else will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, if you're applying that to crossroads, mm -hmm. you know, letting go of old ideals and, and don't uh, look at everything with fresh eyes that just because it may have the illusion of something that's already been there, uh, look at it again. And uh, you'll see something new in it. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, I okay. just really enjoy your show. Well, well, thank, thank you. you. Thanks so yeah. much for calling. Uh -huh. um, uh, check us bye. out on telepathictv.com. Oh, yeah. 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 There's a huge uh, tracks of information yeah. we have there. We have the uh, beach retreat we went on, the pictures yeah. from that. Oh, by the way, I, I would mm -hmm. um, suggest that if people have not looked at our website, have a look and look under the beach retreat pictures because we got some great pictures of spirit orbs 
in the photos, uh, and we've got a whole collection of those. We will be doing a show on that coming up pretty soon, and as mm -hmm. um, soon as I get the time to do that, I'm going to do a whole page of all of our pictures of these spirit orbs. We got some phenomenal pictures, better than ones I've seen anywhere, mm -hmm. so it's a good idea. And um, another website worthy of being checked out is Infowars.com. There's a huge amount of information on that. Yeah, we haven't actually looked at that yet, but we've heard that it has yeah, some really great so. stuff. Based um, on faith, we're talking this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one other thing, just back with the HADO, or the mm -hmm. um, messages in water, you can conduct a, an experiment at home on water or on food. They, had, um, they did an experiment on two, they took two jars and put rice in it and just screwed on lids. And for a month, they shouted at one, you fool, something to that effect, or you're an idiot, you know, these negative words. And then to the other, it said, I love you and thank you. And after the end of the month, the ones that they said you fool to, it was like a gooey black rancid. And the other was just uh, still retained its original color and smelt, smelt like a, a fermented rice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, very much the difference. This happens to us every time someone yells at us, unless we rewrite the programming instantaneously. You can yell at my water all you want. Nonetheless, I'll reform it into something beautiful. Do you have a purpose on earth? Thank you. Because <laughs> it's really looking to your mind, yeah. saying the water in you looks and says, do you agree with this? And if you say no, it does not change. If you mm -hmm. say yes, guess what? It'll and change. And you can always override it manually the minute as you are being insulted, you like can override it. That's absolutely mm -hmm. true. Uh, I had a dream experience where I thought I was dying in the dream and someone came in and took my hand and I thought they were going to heal me, but upon them taking my hand, I, I realized they were going to kill me. And so a voice from deep within my soul arose and said, thank you for healing me. And instantly I was healed because I realized anything that comes into my field belongs to me. Mm -hmm. It's just energy programmed. And I have total domain over reprogramming that, and I reprogram that into a healing energy, mm -hmm. thus the water. And there is a tribe, I, I read this in a Robert Fulgham book years ago, and I don't remember which one, but he talked about some tribe that did not have saws to, to not, uh, cut down trees to make their canoes, so they would go and shout at a tree every day for 30 days, yelling at it, and after 30 days the tree would fall down. So we can injure a tree enough that it would fall over just by our voices yeah, and our intent. Yeah, imagine what we could do in favor of our children. Yes, yeah, yes. It's, I believe the entire of the world could clean up in a single generation if everybody was brought up owning their own power. And um, power is not external. Everybody believes it is, but it's truly not. And there's the example of if someone tells you to do something, who gets your body to move? Because it's not the someone, it's you. So we, that is what free will means. In other words, you do what it is you would love to do unabashed and your life will be grace and beauty in all directions. As soon as you doubt yourself, someone is telling you what to do and then you are manipulated. And enough of this. We could uh, train our children to be, uh, laugh at that because it is truly a joke uh, that we are so easily manipulated by guilt and by others and by authority. None of that. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to change all this stuff. And the older I get, the more I realize we have to put a generation on this planet that knows power. The, the power is within, not outside. The power is within. Uh, if we can train a generation to do that, then, the, boy, you think the baby boomers were a notch in the history of the human race. Get a load of the kids brought up knowing their own power. You know, I think that's really where you know, we get down to essentials, is if we all learn how to think <laughs> and we learn when we're being programmed and hypnotized. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it happens all the time, all the way from the simplest commercial to buy something, up to the most serious things, like sending our children to war or you know oh, whatever yeah. that may be. It's hypnosis. And yeah. when you get in charge of your own thinking, your own consciousness, then nobody can program you because you already know of the programmability of yourself mm -hmm. and love yourself and respect yourself yeah. enough to program yourself with your own intentions. Um, I think that's when we become not only powerful, peace-loving people, but powerful, peace-loving nation and then world well, and then solar to, system. Yeah, in order to accomplish a world peace, as you've been saying, as we've been saying on this program, uh, the spark that creates war is held within each of us. Now, to extinguish that spark, to create peace within yourself, the byproduct of that would be world peace. 
So um, to extinguish that spark is to see it from a different place than we're used to looking from, mm -hmm. from a powerful place. Remember I said it's a different place than we're used to looking from. The idea that we create our reality, okay, and that the reality is based on our beliefs, and mm -hmm. then it's a very easy matter because you're always changing your beliefs. Okay, so to haul off and change them in a very efficient way. The uh, belief number one being that I am creating this. 100% of everything that happens turns out to be on my side. Okay, yes. and it's that word turns out. And that can be years or it can be nanoseconds, depending on how much you want to really look at it. And you know, it, it just keeps getting back to this giving ourselves permission to love ourselves because we do love ourselves. It's giving ourselves permission and get past the guilt. And it usually almost always is a belief that if we love ourselves, we're going to be bad in some way. It just mm -hmm. can't be further from the truth. Yes. And, and just tell your body how much you love it. Tell your consciousness how much you love it. Even if you can't feel it yet, just say the words. Say the words and start opening up to that. Mm -hmm. Because when you love you, you cannot help but to love others. It just can't happen. I'll give you an, a for instance. Have you ever met somebody that kind of reminded you of your, your hardworking days when you were raising your kids and you feel a lot of empathy for them and you might give them a hel helping hand or mentor them? That's because they represent a part of you that you love. And then there might be somebody that kind of uh, doesn't get up in time on Sundays to go do, uh, you know, mow the lawn. And, and they represent the part of you that you are judging and dislike, so you automatically don't like them. So just think if, all, if you love the part of you that slept late, if you love the part of you that messes up sometimes and says things you don't mean, and you would love everybody that does that. And when you can love everybody that comes across your screen, that means that you have found every little nook and cranny within you that, that you had forgotten about and loved it back into your total self and reclaimed all those little fragments that you've got behind walls of, of denial and judgment, those pieces of you. And you're, you have all your strength back, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those that are just tuning in that haven't seen this show before and are now thinking words like far-fetched and I don't believe it and these people are idiots and all the rest of this, well, thank you very much. We appreciate that. <laughs> Please don't misunderstand. Uh, do continue to watch this show because even if you change the channel, you're going to continue to think about these things. And if you really must change the channel, I would suggest do so. But the thing is, this stuff won't let go because it is a much bigger truth than the truth we're used to. So it is up to you, each of us individually, when we get up tomorrow morning and nobody goes to work, what happens is everybody does what it is they love to do, unabashed about it, then that will be referred to as world peace. This is truth. Now, if, if we gave up money, money is at the root and it's not of evil. Evil is its own being. It doesn't require roots. And it, there isn't even a reality that's evil. It's just an interpretation of signals that happen. So when we get to the point that we are sovereign of our own being, well, all that stuff goes you know, away. I, I feel that money is just another illustration of us putting our love and power outside of us. It became this, this, yeah. you know, the, this virtual thing that represents our time and effort. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would always translate everything that I bought or threw away yeah. or anything, I would translate it into my work hours. I translated that into my effort. Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking money, we're really talking us yeah. and our energy and our everything. So just translate all money back into yourself. And, yeah. And I'll give you a technique on translating all money back into yourself. The next time you make an impulse buy, ask yourself, what will I get at the yard sale for this item? I used to say that to my kids. I yeah. said, is this something that you want to pick up off your bedroom floor in a couple months? You in know, pieces. when their bedroom gets like three feet deep. Mm -hmm. And they go, hmm. I said, or you could just wait and get something bigger that won't break. <laughs> and they actually started doing that. Yeah, it's just like yeah. thinking. It is. Yeah. No one, we are not trained to think on this planet. We are trained to doubt ourselves and believe what external things say. And you could not be further off the, pardon the expression, money, <laughs> We have to put an end to this. If we put an end to money, then there, you could go to whatever school you wanted to. It's not about, we'd all be equal. If there was no money whatsoever, each human being would be themselves. And we would all be well, on an equal I, footing. I think, you know, before that, that happens even, we have to entertain the idea how much, what, what our view of money is. 
because I think we identify with it so strongly. No one would ever be in the position to release this whole paradigm of economics. Oh, our medical profession, our war industry, uh, which pharmaceuticals and uh, military weaponry is the biggest money maker in all throughout time. The biggest history. money streams on the planet. And so if, if everything, even, even our spiritual beliefs and everything are so tightly wound about money, I think it just serves us all to investigate how we feel about it and start disengaging our identity from it, even if we still go to work and, and earn a living. Mm -hmm. It might make a real difference. Um, Cable TV is a non-money money paradigm. paradigm. Mm -hmm. This is a non-money paradigm. The, uh, Mary and I, the people that you see, don't see running the cameras, uh, Tom Shaw and the rest of the crew, uh, Susan Johnson, etc., that Tom are Johnson, running. Tom Johnson, Marianne. Yeah, Marianne, that are running this equipment are doing so not because they are paid. They are doing so either uh, uh, because they like or love or mm -hmm. this is the entire world could run on love. In the way it's running now, it's running on profit motivation, which is the easiest way to be numbed out. Well, Big money and baby seals. Well, you see, and this is not to. Not to say that that we um, that money is bad or abundance is bad because that's not true at all. It's when we identify with it more than we do with ourselves that mm -hmm. we run into trouble. Yeah, it's just yeah. one more thing, and it's a very powerful thing that pulls us outside mm -hmm. of us. Yeah. Well, I thought. Um, yeah. yeah I thought I would uh, talk, talk a crystals. little bit more about tap water mm -hmm. because this is interesting, and I'm not sure. This book says it was published in 2001, which is when we originally did our show. But we spent, we put a lot of effort in, and we, um, in our bowl events that we have, we structure water in the quartz crystal bowls, mm -hmm. and we drink it because it really is healing. It's, it's like I would love to see the crystals from that. But yeah, the next bowl event. But we event. did, we did uh, sending the uh, information to the Potomac, and this, these first three pictures, which are going to be on this side of the page, are from Paris, London, and Tokyo. And I'd like you to just look at the, the water here on this side. So Paris, London, and Tokyo. And you can see that it's very discordant. Uh, chlorine does really wretched things to the water. And your body. Yeah. Or drink okay. bleach and deny it. Okay. Now I won't go over those, but look at the crystals on this side. Oddly enough, this is Washington, D.C. Now I feel that that's from a several contributing factors. Including we have actively us. been sending uh, uh, prayer love uh, different things like that to the Potomac, but it's also a hub of people coming lovingly to protest and to empower, uh, you know, the Million Man March. We've got so many marches on D.C. I'm sure that that is contributing to these water crystals, even though it has a far inferior grade of water in D.C. than anywhere else. And that's New York City right here. Mm -hmm. New York City has the best tap water, I believe, in the whole world. It has better tap water than mo all the bottled water you buy. Mm -hmm. And by the way, av Avion, somebody pointed it's out backwards is naive. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's contempt. Yeah. Uh, we don't but we have a call. Have to go so any further we'll go. that way. Go ahead on the call. Okay. And I want to say, check out the website for our next quartz crystal bowl event, in which Here we, we actually tune the water that's inside of you as well as you. Hi, caller. What's your name, please? Hi, my name is Chris from Arlington. Hi, Chris, Chris from Arlington. What can we do for you? Well, I'm just curious about the the staff that's next to you. Oh, I yes. noticed that you uh, you usually have it there. there and it I wondered what its meaning was, and I, I wondered, you usually have a crystal that's right in the middle of it. Yep, yeah, and uh, I wonder um, about that, too. Oh. All right, well, the crystal is, um, okay. Neville <coughs> makes these, by the way. Yes, I dream them and make them, and uh, nature provides these twisted uh, branches that I seem to have the ability to see in the woods and find them. I don't take living trees to do this. They're already dead when I get a hold of them. And uh, then I just put this copper filament in it, and this thing generates an extremely low frequency. Now, whether or not you know it, the truth remains that thoughts can ride on frequency. If you're watching me on television, you are looking at thoughts riding on frequency. So, the thing about this is there's no pre-existing program in it, so I'm going to suggest that all human beings find within themselves the peace that we've been talking about on this show. You find within you your peace, and there can never be another war on Look this planet. Look at that planet. glow coming out of it. Yeah, there we go. And this is extremely low frequency. I doubt seriously that the mic is picking it up, but you can probably feel it. We've had viewers in the past say, oh my God, I felt that thing straighten out my cranial sacral 
um, configuration right. yeah. within, yeah. So if and you, if you feel this, and if you're touching it, it mm -hmm. has a really beautiful. You I mean, you feel can the really vibe go that. right through. It's you. incredible. Yeah, uh, in this, and it's a marvelous device. It really is, and um, they aren't on the website. Come to think of it, if you come to any of the classes, you'll see the ones. Um, I'll get them up there pretty soon. Yeah, I have a, a number of them. Well. Yeah, as well as the art. I have an art show at Barnes and Noble at Seven Corners, by the way, and uh, another Thank one you, uh, in Fairfax. Another art show. Uh, all that information will be on the web, but that's what's going on. And this is an ELF generator, extremely low frequency generator. Uh, you at home decide a peaceful, beautiful thing for this to carry. Uh, peace for all humanity, uh, end of all money, end of all disease. Money in the sense of an external power, money in that sense. Mm -hmm. okay. Take it, have, be, go ahead, put an intention into this. It'll go into the set, into this device, and back out, well, and it works. Well, it let works. me just talk a, a second sure. about how prayer works, or mm -hmm. meditation. What happens is, normally, I, I don't really have the specific numbers, but I'm going to give you a general idea. The left hemisphere of the brain uh, is at like 104 hertz, or vib Round vibrations, there. and the right hemisphere is down at like 101. And so you really, if you were to feel the left brain's uh, frequency is up like that, when we're in a state of meditation or prayer, what we're actually doing is getting both hemispheres to vibrate at the same frequency. And when it makes a carrier wave, that then our thought or intention can be broadcast. And it really, it really works. And this is a very similar thing to what the mm -hmm. ELF generator is doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so uh, that's really like what happens when you pray and how miracles happen. Mm -hmm. is you configure yeah. the brain and it launches this into reality. Let's have everyone yeah. tomorrow this. recognize a miracle in their life, just to recognize or it. Or just to say, I give myself permission to see and accept the miracles in my life mm -hmm. because they are already happening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just having the eyes to see it. And anybody that starts opening up spiritually, they'll start having these synchronicities, like thinking or seeing every time they look at the clock, it's 11-11 or mm -hmm. um, you know, a street light will go out every time or on every time they pass it. These things are miracles that happen around us all the time. It's developing mm -hmm. the eyes to see it. And we're not out of place to say that if you notice the clock at 11.11 all the time, make a wish every time you see it at 11.11. A 11. decision, yeah. Yeah, make a decision, which mm -hmm. could be very much the same yeah. thing. Yeah, uh, how are we doing, caller? Oh, no, this is wonderful. Thank you. I, I was just oh. wondering because you had, you had taken the crystal out, but then you put it back in. Yeah, it doesn't sit. I only put it in when I'm actively using it. Otherwise, uh, uh, one might forget and the crystal might fall out okay. since it's not anchored in there. So just when I have the intention yeah, in my head, I pl turn the thing on. Yeah. It's the and on it's, switch. It's typically do doesn't even I include the crystal. True. It's just that's like an added thing mm -hmm. since crystals yeah. are great conductors. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Thanks yes. so much for your call. We appreciate it. Yeah, very much. Yeah. Now, just the one point. I wish to point out that uh, we, the human race, are swinging from materialism, Richard Bach's quote, swinging from materialism into spirituality. And while this may be a slow swing, it is nonetheless extremely powerful. And spirituality, not materialism, is the way of the future. And um, other, there's great literacy on this. Uh, James Redfield uh, pointed out uh, long ago in Celestine Prophecy that um, mankind will come to the point that they realize they have to spend money to develop spiritually. Now you think nothing of spending money at a gym or nothing of spending money on clothes or cars or apartment or any of this. We, we don't think twice about spending money on tangible things. Well, that's the thing about it. Um, spirituality is far more tangible than anyone is prepared to admit. It's the tangibleness underneath all tangibility. <laughs> yeah, it is driving absolutely everything. And to get on top of it, to not have that be outside of you, to be powerful because of your own being, this is what we're talking about on this show. To be powerful as you are, not because you own something, not because of the number of people that feel they are your subordinate, but powerful because it's who you are. And this also, is the difference. And also, even if you have a lot, to mm -hmm. not feel guilty about that yeah. and say, I deserve to have whatever it is I've created and I, and I love myself. Sure. And yeah. that's the thing why we crave love from other people is what we're really doing and looking for is permission to love ourselves unabashed. Mm -hmm. It's unabashed. like when someone loves you, it gives you, that's why we look better. We, we usually, after we fall in love, we're thin, you know, we lose weight. We do. It's because somebody said that you're lovable. And yeah. so if we just tell ourselves we're lovable right now, our yes. body will 
vibrate mm -hmm. at the frequency of love, and these diseases cannot attack. Because all diseases yes. are present around you anyway. It's and when we only, stop yeah. thinking love thoughts about ourselves that it pulls you down into the frequency band that they can take hold. Mm -hmm. So everybody stand up, if you can, open the window and yell out the window, I love me unabashed. I love myself, I am great. Say this, if you cannot stand up and say it, think it. If you cannot think it, then continue to watch write the show. Write it on a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah write it something. on the show, but get we, it in your life. Remember, you believing is seeing. Mm -hmm. So believe it, then see it. And so just pretend, which is the doorway of all superconsciousness, mm -hmm. pretend that you love you and you will one day begin loving you. Yeah, if that is far afield from you. If you are already aware of loving you, then that you are great, that you are magnificent, that you can transmute a situation with a single thought, that um, what, uh, the realization that thought creates, and so we have to be careful about what we're thinking, Oh, well, we haven't been so far, so I guess I cannot use the can't word there. Mm -hmm. But uh, while we are selective about what it is we think, we can grow greatly from that concept because it is where we place our attention is what grows. And this is apparent all over the place. As soon as you place your attention on the house being noisy, it will increase in decibel level to the point that you cannot be healthy there because you've placed your attention on it and you have been growing it. Well, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's something else like, you know, we were talking about words and, and how they heal and, and injure um, if we allow that to. One thing that you can do with new babies, this is something I've always oh, done, yeah. every time a new baby I hold it, I say, you are wonderful, welcome to the world, I'm so happy you're here, we're so happy you're here, you are wonderful, what an angel. I just whisper these words and I've never had an infant yet that didn't just relax like that. Mm -hmm. And what mm -hmm. you're doing is you are helping the initial programming of this child to only accept this kind of programming. And particularly if anybody's out there is, has contact with newborns, uh, please do this. You are changing the world larger than you could ever imagine by doing this. And I've done this with children um, that weren't necessarily in the best environment for children and already had some emotional problems and I would just hold them and tell them this and they just progressively with every word just relaxed, relaxed. Mm -hmm. And they weren't even really old enough to understand what my words were, but mm -hmm. they knew. And so we know what mm -hmm. each other thinks and, and does. And so to know that we are all just as magnificent and just as vulnerable as that child, it's never too late to have a good childhood. Say to yourself, welcome to the world, we're all glad you're here. And mm -hmm. I'll say that to everybody watching. Yeah. Welcome to the world, we're all glad you're we're here. We're glad you're here. Yeah. Absolutely, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. And you can rewrite your own timeline, so whether or not it is made up by you, which do, the mind doesn't know that it's made up or that's not. Right. The mind believes everything it sees on TV, which is held in news, does so much damage. Changing the subject back to where, forward to where it is, uh, uh, rewrite that moment of your birth where you are received as a grand, exalted being by intelligent, aware, loving people that just gratiate you into the planet. Just imagine that. Well, I, I did, uh, I've done that where I've gone into a meditation and I've led people to go back to your moment of birth and say those words that I just said, mm -hmm. and everybody had such a profound reaction. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, just do it. You'll see yeah. what I mean. It, you'll just find you walk on more solid solid steps from that yeah, point we forward. we teach a class on the last Sunday in the month that's very much about uh, what the last few paragraphs on this program. Mm -hmm. uh, very much that's the focus of this uh, last Sunday in the month class. Mm -hmm. It's all on the web. Check it out. Uh, give us an email if this is, or call us if this is something that's going on. So our program tonight is about the effect that emotions have on water and uh, Emoto's scientific proof of the fact of the effect that emotions, words, the language codes, words, uh, have on water, and, and since I, we're made of water. And I wish we had a, a picture of the crystal that was formed by our intro music, Eine kleine Nacken, is that mm -hmm. how it's said? Yeah. By Mozart, which is music. our opening music. Mm -hmm. That has such beautiful crystals created by that. Mm -hmm. One more that I think this is just absolutely incredible. They, they took words on pieces of paper and, and showed it to a bottle of water and then tested it. And this crystal over here was after showing a picture of a dolphin. Yeah. This is probably one of the more complex structures ever. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's ever seen a show on dolphins, if you look at um, the, the gestation period of a human fetus, it goes through our evolutionary tract. 
-hmm. goes from a uh, tadpole all the way up to us. A dolphin's embryo goes all the way, it looks just like us developing, only it goes past us. Mm -hmm. And so this looks like a much more uh, evolved type of a crystal, if you notice the crystals mm -hmm. in between there. It's Which beautiful, it's got proof. like a little dolphins picture. Dolphins are in advance of us. And they what did, they did uh, one too where, um, mm -hmm. this is not in this book, but in another book, they put, I, I believe, um, I can't remember what kind of an herb, and they put a picture of the herb into the water and then did the water, and the water crystals looked like the herb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Water is unbelievably adaptable, and we are made of water. I was curious, the page that you had open with the dolphin thing, and I don't remember, what was the, um, there's two shapes on the other side of the yes. page. Somebody um, might have been curious about. The top one was a, a, um, a crop circle, ah. and then this was... Um, Water from a, a wash basin at a temple, oh. and it and it made Looks the like picture. The yeah, the top one looked like a UFO, and this is a Japanese shape for gratitude, and that was from the temple. Mm -hmm. This is the shape for gratitude, and that was shown a picture of a crop circle that it's looked like a spaceship. Yeah, crop circles are far more than we have been allowed to know. Yeah, and we they could had, do a show on crop circles. Yeah, and they yeah. had a they had a, some children sending. Uh, thoughts to one batch of water, mm -hmm. same distilled, because distilled water, by the way, has no life force in it. Mm -hmm. And we have in the past taken distilled water and put it in our quartz crystal bowls and rang it, you know, in its mm -hmm. plastic container mm -hmm. that you buy it in, yeah. and then tasted it before and after, and it's dead and then it's living. Mm -hmm. So you can program your water to be anything. You can put it a word on there and say, remedy for my uh, sore knee remedy for this yeah. and let it sit there and then drink it. I have done that and I have felt better. Mm -hmm. I honestly mm -hmm. have. There's yeah. no difference between medicine and, and chemistry that you get out of a, a pill bottle that, or doing that with the water. It's programmed energy. One mm -hmm. is programmed with chemicals, yeah. unnatural chemicals, and one's programmed with the actual solution. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow is Saturday the 9th of um, uh, October, this is? October, yes. yeah. And uh, Mary and I are working with individuals tomorrow, and there's still a slot or two open. If you wish to um, work with us um, one way, or Mary or I, yeah, just Neville for you to know. Yeah, past lives and Past lives, a lot of other and uh, techniques. Check out the web. Either one of us, yeah, uh, can conduct. So just that this knowledge has uh, been spoken, and I'm very happy about that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we've got a bunch of other stuff coming up this month. We have uh, Off Planet Lives, which is like oh, a yeah. past life, only you're exploring uh, incarnations perhaps on other other planets, mm -hmm. as well as the language codes. Neville will be teaching that. It's a great class teach mm -hmm. you how to empower your speech to actually get things done. Yes. We have a dream workshop coming up, mm -hmm. the quartz crystal bowls, where we right. tune our chakras as well as drink structured water. And that's the Mayan class precedes the... And the, the, uh, the Mayan. And we have mm -hmm. Sekim coming up. Mm -hmm. And we also have a special Sekim this month on the 27th, I believe, which is the total lunar eclipse, a Wednesday night. We're having mm -hmm. a special Sekim session and then maybe have a ceremony with the eclipse, mm -hmm. as well as consciously creating your life toward the end of the month. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much what uh, you can do if a uh, one-hour show is not quite enough. Uh, we really do open the door on this sh uh, show, and we are very happy to continue uh, our journeys, continue your journey, uh, if you wish, uh, the guidance in it to um, yeah. You know, yeah, uh, but check, check it out. out. It's all it's mm -hmm. all on the web. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just hold the cover of this book in case anybody. I got this at uh, Barnes and Noble in Seven Corners, uh, but it's available anywhere. It's well, it's called the show. Hidden Messages in Water. Mm -hmm. And there's a few editions of this. This is the just the regular version of that mm -hmm. by Emoto, Misori Misuru Emoto. I don't want to. Uh, chop I up don't the know name, either. but that's yes. my, my version of how to mm -hmm. say that. It's a it's very an good book. It's interesting book. book. And mm -hmm. uh, as we say, we're, we're doing the bowl event. And there's also a DVD. water also. Yes, which is a very powerful thing. Mm -hmm. There's a DVD that they have out too. It's a great group. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So at any rate, we know that our words have power. And so yes. uh, I recommend Neville's book, The Language Codes, because it talks about the words that probably make those sort of crystals like <laughs> just do it or do it instead of let's do it. Yeah. Lots yeah. of words. Yeah, and feel uh, free to call in yeah. if you have any questions. 
Well, the water like uh, information uh, caused me to feel very validated, not that I would not do that internally, uh, but that someone had measured the effect in water that words have, yeah. which is very much the language codes. This yes. is the thing. Yeah. Um, because in a very short period of time, if every one of us gave up the word need, we would not be living in a uh, consumer society. If everybody gave up the word need, I need nothing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a very powerful thing. Well, very interesting. Robert Fulgham once said, uh, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can break your heart. Mm -hmm. And thoughts can heal your heart, Yes, I would add. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what that's really saying is that we do matter. You see, I, when we believe that and know that we're powerful and that we have power in our own lives, then we'll mm -hmm. know that our words have power. I, I believe, I don't remember if this was the Bible or some, some book I had read, where it was talking about the more you know, the more you have responsibility for. That's not to make you guilty or to live on edge all the time and be measuring yourself. What that says is the more you know, the more you love yourself, the more you see yourself in everyone else. And we do that anyway. We see ourselves, that's what we do. We look at every face we see to find out what part of me can I recognize in you. And the more you love you, then you will find lovable things that you recognize in those around you. So you can see it's not selfish in the negative connotation of the word. It's mm -hmm. really where we have to be in order to get this world away from this um, reality TV where we're getting our uh, entertainment from torturing each other. That shows you that we're torturing ourselves inside. That's very true. Mm -hmm. uh, to speak briefly on the subject of responsibility, and the first time you heard the word responsibility was when you desired a pet. And the, the word responsibility was used to beat you up. It is that simple. Now, as for myself, I would pr prefer to be responsible, held responsible, in that if I'm held responsible, I can then do something about it. Whereas if I am not, then I, ha I am powerless. So there is power in responsibility, but for myself, I would prefer the word accountability rather than responsibility mm -hmm. because responsibility is really a fake word because even a corpse can respond. We all have the ability to respond. It is accountability that that word is actually addressing. So indeed, well, we are accountable, but we would not be doing anything. Well, I think what that's, that is addressing is our belief that we cannot respond. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And when we believe we cannot respond is when we're being forced when we're being told do it instead of let's do it. Yes. Because that automatically deadens your response ability, your ability to respond, just part like we're of showing you dies. in the water. Yes, yeah. part of you dies when yeah. you just do it. Part mm -hmm. of you dies. If we decide let's do it, ah, everything lives there. Well, and one is, is an individual and cut off and separate, mm -hmm. and one is total in a, as a whole. One thing I, I noticed when I met you, Neville, is you spoke a lot of we, even though you met you, often. And yeah. I really liked that. It made everybody included. Nobody yes. was excluded. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very powerful way to speak. It's also a very loving way to speak to others. The word you is inherently accusatory. If I find great authors are using the word you to beat the reading audience there, even, um, and I won't name names on that, but uh, it's very important that way in which this is spoken, the way in which everything is spoken is penultimate. No one realizes this because we have a complete sovereignty over reality. And when we say, you could do better, well, of course I could. Why did you say that? You know, and the you goes right back. No, mm -hmm. this is, we could do better. Well, yes, we will. Yeah. Yes. One, one is a, a crystal growing outward. One is something being pulled yeah, in. Yeah, you has become a very accusatory thing. I had an well, argument for six months with an editor over one of these books because I, I never used the word you, and they kept saying, you're not using the word you. You're not getting your reader involved. You're not getting your reader involved. Yeah. Right? I go, yeah, right, tell me about well, it. Well, when you say we, then the, the reader feels like he's part of the, r yeah, the, the yeah, writing. The plurative yeah. we. Well, mm -hmm. we do have about 10 minutes left, so if anybody My would like to call God. in for a reading or a mm -hmm. dream interpretation or a question on this water information, mm -hmm. please do. And um, I'll speak briefly about the uh, painting in the background here, which is the Genesis pattern. Uh, this is uh, taught to by Drundelow to be the uh, building block of the entire universe. Uh, anyone who's ever had a compass and has just started making circles around the edge of the compass like a spirograph uh, will have found this form which is said to speak. Now, 
uh, as far as this goes as the painting, there it is, um, whatever it is you hang on your wall calls a spirit into your life. Now, since this represents the universal building block, then, and that's obvious that the, the building blocks are being brought into your home by virtue of hanging this, then the next thing that one observes is the particular colors. If you've been watching week after week, they're never the same because I'm always painting a new one that is in a different series of colors. So the one that you feel resonates, oh, that one looks really good, I really like that one, that's the one that resonates with you. Or of all the shows I've seen, you know, the one I really remember was that one with the pink and the brown. Okay, so that one is the one that resonates with you. Well, they're so also in the sacred geometric form of the flower of life, mm -hmm. which this is the building blocks of all things. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it also serves to stimulate consciousness. Right, and the particular colors will be the ones that are germane to you that will be healing for you. So uh, take a look at whatever. They'll be on the web in a few weeks. We haven't gotten to that point yet, but then I'll write all this stuff down uh, so that you can read it and see mm -hmm. what else is going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mary has been building treasure candles, okay, which are here on the... Um, yeah, those are very good for meditating and launching intentions out into the ethers as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's little charms and crystals and things in it and that appear delightful. as you burn. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. a lot of fun. They're very interactive. Yeah, I'll tell the story of um, you and a friend had uh, decided that we would, you would put an end to all these etheric cords connected to uh, specifically the people involved in that scenario. And uh, you lit a candle that you'd made years ago. And um, the following morning when I was down where this took place and I was cleaning up, I noticed that a little tiny pair of scissors had come out. Now this is seven years later at least. That was and the, the perfect, exact candle. Yeah, because there's different things in each one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, yeah the, the one that resonates, the colors involved in the candle mm -hmm. also. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So those will eventually be up on the web. Oh, you know, uh, something else that um, I thought of as far as this water, something we spoke about several years ago. In uh, Japan, there was a certain river that, and I'm sorry I don't remember the name, that everyone t calls polluted. It's like, oh, that river is so polluted and just sends these thoughts. And they took the, the um, water and flash froze it. And remember, we're not flash freezing the pollution that's around the mo water molecules. Mm -hmm. It's just the water um, that it's really looking at. And it formed this really, you know, uh, horrible kind of a crystal. They took that same water and 500 people sent love and prayer to it. And it form this beautiful, like that love and gratitude crystal. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. can change anything with our words. And we have a call coming in. We do. All so right. So I'll go ahead and, uh, there we go. Hi, caller. What's your name, please? Brenda. Brenda, what can we do for you? Yes, uh, I noticed that you, well, I called in for a reading, and I was inquiring as to what type of reading, or do you just ask a specific question? Uh, we usually do just a general reading, but if you have a specific question, we can see what we get on that. Okay. Um, marriage, or let's say if a person is single, do you see marriage in their future or something? She um, wants to you know, know I'm having marriage. such a hard time here. Just she marriage? wants to know if she's marrying in her new future from what... Uh, okay. Brenda, speak loudly. Uh, here oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So what I'll do is I'll just pull some cards on, on the topic of marriage in your, in your field okay. and see what comes up. Sounds good to me. Because it's usually a matter of, um, since all things, I just feel like pulling four cards, so I'll do that. The first card, I, well, I feel like right now where you're at is just discovering who you are. That's what this card tells me. Each of those people, you know, it's all equal and everybody's the same height, but everybody's unique color and their, their own personality. And I feel like that's something that you probably had to fight against your life, people putting you in pigeonholes about something. And it's like, well, I gotta, I gotta be me in order to figure out what that is. Yeah. And this totality talks about finishing one thing before beginning another. And so I think that this is also saying that you're not quite done with uh, figuring out who you are and what you want to do. And also the the courage card. If you look at this flower growing in that wall, just a little bit of dirt there, but this this flower is so courageous to go do that. Uh, you have things that you're going to that you'd like to prove to yourself that you'd like to understand about yourself before you get too tied up in things and then the fourth card that I felt like pulling was the lovers card and so I would say that that is something that is coming up for you
but it's really right now about you figuring out what you want so that you get to know who you are so that you can attract somebody more like you so that you can be happy for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. So I would jump just uh, abandon with with abandon jump into this beautiful journey of understanding who you are because what's at the end of it is something that is quite lovely mm -hmm. yeah it's very important for all of us individually we as each of us individually to find out first of all who we are because a very few people really get there by the end of the incarnation you might have an idea of who you are but by then it's like grandpa or mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. not only who you are the other thing would be what it is you would love, love to do with your life. Then, after you found out who you are and what it is you would love to do, then you would search for the mate. Then you would find somebody that can resonate with you. This is the point. Well, I, you first I have, have to find you. You know, mm -hmm. like when you're younger and, and you're a female and you know guys like football. So you say, I can tolerate that. And so you say, I like football too. And then you find yourself 30 years later watching football every Sunday. So that's where if you had just said from the beginning, I don't like football and I'm okay with that, then you would attract someone that didn't like it. Also, yeah. uh, and I know that's trivial and everything, but it's kind of no, illustrates that's a very the telling point. example. But I really feel that that's what our caller is in the midst of. It's just yeah. saying, you know, I, it, if somebody keeps defining my borders for me, and I feel like you've had a lot of that throughout your life, mm -hmm. it's like I know that it, what I'm going to get is, is just prisons instead of yeah. lovely embraces. Well, thank you so much. Thank I know you. We've got mm -hmm. two minutes. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got uh, a few minutes left. Mm -hmm. I'd like to thank everybody, all the folks for helping us out here and everybody that called. We always love mm -hmm. getting calls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And wow, there's quite a bit we've done here. Um, the um, book, The Hidden Messages yeah. in and Water. And also, I would encourage people Give, give some experiments to this. Uh, even if you get two pieces of bread in a plastic bag, send one love and send one. It's kind of hard Not to do so to love. tell a poor little piece of bread that, you know. Yeah, but well, we can tell for a scientific sake, just ask the bread to volunteer, and if it does, mm -hmm. fine. And, and just see, look at the bread after, after a week or a month and see how they look, how it's different. Mm -hmm. Do these experiments yourself because sometimes. You know, um, it, it, it's really good to have it coming in through all of our faculties, both our microscope and our telescope. Yeah. I feel we stand between the two. Our, our intuition is our telescope and our intellect is our microscope. And there's a tool for every job. Stand and in the middle and be the master well. of yeah. which one you use. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in weeks, months, years coming up, we'll be teaching classes on crystals, which will be quite a telling thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, um, there's so many opportunities. As we said, check it out on the web, telepathictv.com, uh, and that'll bring a lot. And whatever oh, yes. it is you resonate with, to act on it, your and choice. Please, and also, please tell your friends that, um, that we're on. And you can also view us on the web at telepathictv.com, which is a different show than this, same format. So mm -hmm. if you watch us here, you can also catch yeah. us once a week there, a new show every week yeah, and at telepathictv.com. So please send the link mm -hmm. around to anybody you yeah. may know. We'd really like that. And we are growing a planetary and it's our, audience. Yes, so and it's, our, um, it's our privilege and honor to take you to the door. Mm -hmm. And uh, your choice to go through that door. Yes. And as we say, we're growing a planetary audience. So if you are regularly corresponding with people around the world, if you'd be so kind to send part of it.